Okay, let's pick up from where we were last time. And we were able to parse a, an, an expression that's fully parenthesized and come up with this tree. So, well, that's wonderful, but now what are we going to do with this tree now that we have it? And the answer is we would like to be able to go through that tree and do things like either print out the original expression, or we would like to be able to evaluate this expression. And to do this, we need to do something called traversing a tree. Now, traversing an array or a list, there's like one way to do it, either four, well, two ways, forward or backwards, because it's one dimensional. With trees, we have several options. And so here's our tree. It has a root and a left and right subtree. I'm going to be using the recursive definition here because that makes things a lot easier. So one way we can do it is we can print the root if we want to print out everything in the tree. And then we print everything on the left, and then we print everything on the right. And remember, this is recursive because this left subtree here is going to be another root and subtree. And so we print its root and its left subtree, then its right subtree. Uh, before, I, why, don't I, why, don't, why don't I implement that right now before we go any further? And to, show you what the, what, to show you what I mean by all of that. So here I've created a tree that looks like this. And this is going to be the pre-order traversal. And we're going to give it a tree. And here's what we do. If the tree is not equal to null, that's our base case. If you give me a null tree, then there's nothing to print. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say system system.out.println of, and I'm sorry, I, I forgot how I implemented this. Uh, get root value, perfect. And then I'm going to print the left half. So I'm going to call preorder with tree.getLeftChild. And then I'll print the right tree. Let me check to make sure that that's what I named them. Yeah, get left child and get right child. And I, hey, I hate to say it, but I can't make it any more. I can't, I'd love to make it more complicated than this, but that's all there is to it. Now, what are we going to see as a result? Well, let's see what that's going to look like. We're going to start with the root, which is A. Then we're going to print the left subtree. Again, we start with the pre-order, and that means we're going to print the B. And now we're going to print the left subtree of that, which has a root of D and there's no left tree on D. There's no right tree on D either. Now we come back to B and since we process the left subtree, we'll now go and process the right subtree, which will give us the E, which is the root of that subtree. And then we do its left and there's nothing on the right to print. Now we've printed everything that is underneath the B tree and we return to A. We've done the left subtree of A. Now we can do the right subtree of A, which starts off with C because that's the root of that tree. There's nothing to its left. That means we can now process the right of the C tree, which is going to give us a G. And then the left of the G is H and the left of G is I. So this is what we should get when we do the pre-order. And here in the main, I've done some fancy stuff to get the tree looking exactly the way I want it. And let's do pre-order of tree and see what happens. And there we have A, B, well, let me, let's do it all on one line, shall we? Uh, and I'll put a blank there just to make it look nicer. And sure enough, there it is, A, B, D, E, F, C, G, H, I. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So that's one way of doing it. It's, that's called pre-order. Now, there's another way that we could do it. And that is we could do what's called post-order traversal. And in this case, 
what we'll do is we'll print the left first, then we'll print the right, and then we'll do the root. So it gets or it gets processed last. There's no, there's there's no rule that says we have to start with the root. That's the way most people think about it. But why not process it at the end? In fact. Your choice of how you're going to traverse the tree is dependent on what you want to do with the tree. So let's take a look at this again. And now let's figure out what post order is going to be. In the post order, we need to do the left tree of A first. Yeah, that's this BDEF subtree. Oh, looks like we're going to have to do the left subtree of that. So D is going to come out first. Now we're going to do the right subtree of B, which is going to do the F, because remember, we're doing subtrees first. And then the last thing is going to be the root of the EF tree. And now we've handled the right part of the BDEF tree, which means we can print the root here. And great. Now we need to do the right half of the big tree. Eh? So that means we've got the C tree here. Okay, we don't do it as the left half. Oh, that was easy. There is none. Now we do the right half. The right half, we have to do H, I, and G. Because we do the left, then the right, then the root. Now that that's processed, we do the C and then A. So that's what we should get when we do a post-order traversal. And the code is virtually the same. Again, if the tree is not equal to null, then we're going to, uh, well, we'll do post-order of the left child. And then we'll do the post-order of the right child um, and then we'll print the root and let's go and compile that and see what we get and D-F-E-B-H-I-G-C-A. Sure enough, it works. Okay, so there's a second way of traversing a tree. And that's two of the three main methods that we're doing. Namely, we have pre-order, post-order. The last one is called in-order. And what that does, we're going to print the left tree first, then the root, and then the right subtree. Now, the names, by the way, of the these traversals tell you where the root goes. So when you say pre-order, the root is prefixed. It's the last first thing you do. Post-order, it's postfixed. It's the last thing. In order, the root is the thing you do in the middle. Um, I'm going to move this code up here to the top so I can see everything that I'm doing. And this is going to be, again, if the tree is not equal to null, then we're going to do in order of tree.getLeftChild. We'll do the left part first. Then we'll print the root. And then we'll print out the right half of the tree. The fact that we have a recursive data structure means that we can use recursion here. And writing this is a lot simpler than having to figure out how to do this with while loops. I probably could figure out how to do it with a while loop, but I wouldn't want to. And let's see, what should we get as a result with this one? Okay, so we need to start off with the left child. The left child of A is the BDEF tree. Now we're going to do the left part first, then the B, which is the root. And now we can do the right half, which is going to be the 
um, F is going to come first and then E because that's in the middle and there's nothing on the right. That takes care of that tree. Now we can do A because that's in order. We do the root. And now let's process the CGHI tree. Okay, C is a root, nothing on the um, left. So that means we're going to put the root there. And now we can do the right. On the right, we're going to do the H first, then the G, and then the I. The left followed by the root followed by the right. So that's what we should get with our in order. And again, I have, have all three of these here. And, and let's see if that matches what I said we would get. D-B-F-E-A-C-H-G-I. Sure enough. Yeah. Well, I can I can see you are all thrilled by this. <laughs> and I I really like how elegant this is. There's not a lot of code that you have to write. It just all magically works because it's it's recursion. Now the question is, I I I, I hear some one thing in their mind, yeah, but what about all the extra overhead? What about stack overflow? Well, yeah, okay, if you have a binary tree that's 500 levels deep or 1,000 levels deep, then you might be in trouble. Okay, but if you have a binary tree that's 1,000 levels deep, you might be doing something wrong anyway. Okay, now, now that we know about these traversals, wonderful. Now, what do we do with this one? If we want to evaluate this expression, what we're going to do is we're going to do this is as a post order traversal. Let's think about this. A post order traversal is going to take the seven and then the three, and then we're going to add those together. So we evaluate the left half, the right half, and then do the operation last. Seven plus three is 10. That will replace, in fact, okay, fine. Let's do this, see if I can. So once we get rid of, do that, then we end up with a 10 here. And of course, I'm going to have to change my font size a little bit there. Great. Okay. And then these will go away. So we evaluate the left half. Now we're going to have to evaluate the right half. And we're going to do that recursively. We have the minus the 5 and the 2. And we'll evaluate 5, evaluate 2, and then subtract them which gets, ends up with a three, correct? And that means all of this gets replaced with a three. Um, and now we have the 10 and the three because we've evaluated the left and right half of the main tree that we had before, and that ends up with 30. Again, very nice, very elegant. And it all works because we're doing things in with a post-order traversal. And here is our parse tree builder. I'm not going to go over that again. This is the same as it was before. And here's our parse tree example. There's two ways of doing the evaluation that they show in the book. I'm not going to need to show you this one. This is the one that I just talked about. So how do I do a post-order evaluation? I'm going to have a left value and a right value and a result. And if I don't, if I have a null tree, then I return null. That's my base case that prevents me from um, recursion, infinite recursion. So I'm now going to get the left child and evaluate that. That'll be my left value. Then I'll evaluate the right-hand side and put that into the right-hand value. I need to make sure that I have values on both sides in case somebody screwed up and gave me a bad expression. I might end up with a null on one of those. Then I'm going to get the root value, and I'm going to apply that operator to the left and right values. And here's the apply. 
So I have a string operator, double left and double right operand. And if it's a plus, a minus, a times, and a, um, if it's not if it's not any one of those, it must be a division. I could have done it with a switch statement also. Oh, I'm so tempted to show the new version of the switch statement. But no, no, we'll leave that for some other time. Let me... Let me cut this out. And so here I have three times five minus four plus six. Um, and then add one at the end of all of that. It's all fully parenthesized. And let's do this. And that should be 15 minus 10 is uh, five plus one is six. We should end up with six here. And sure enough, that's what we end up with. Now, the next question is, um, how do I convert one of these trees into the original expression? Now, this is going to be using um, in order. Why? Because remember, what we're going to have here is we want the left side of the... Let's come back up here. We want the left and then the operator and then the other operand. And with the, the operator has to come in the middle. So we're going to have an in-order evaluation to do this. Again, if the tree is not equal to null, we're just going to make a string. We're going to add on an open parenthesis. And then whatever the string value of the left half is, add on the key, and then whatever's in the right half of the tree and a closing parenthesis. Now, the only problem with this is that there are parentheses around all of the um, numbers and we would like to get rid of that. That's one of the exercises they give. If you wanna work on that in lab time, um, I will upload this as soon as I can at the end of the lecture. So you can um, work on that. It turns out it is not a gigantic change. Um, let me give you a hint on that, though. I see I kind of got to come back here. And I'll turn on the um, video in a moment here. I just have to write this up on the board. So I have here three times five minus four plus six and plus one one two three um, oh yeah let me turn on the video on this one because you see you have no idea what i'm doing here well i don't i barely have an idea of what i'm doing either so by the way, here's how I checked if the parentheses are balanced. Every time I see an opening parenthesis, I add one. And every time I see a closing one, I subtract one. So I've got one, two, three, two, three, two, one, zero. So I make sure if I end up on zero, my parentheses are balanced. They may not be exactly where I want them to be, but they're definitely balanced. Okay, what does the tree for this look like? Okay. Well, we're going to have an addition of one here. And we're going to add the one to whatever this left half works out to. And the subtraction is here in the middle. And then this is going to be times three and five. And we're going to subtract that with the addition of four and six. So that's what my tree is going to look like when it when it grows up. Yeah. Um, notice there's something very special about the numbers. What do you see about the numbers as opposed to the operators? What's special about them? Hmm? Well, yeah. is there anything that all of these other nodes have that the number nodes don't have? Let's put it that way. Let me get out of the way so you can see it. Mm 
let me ask this one. Which of these nodes have children? Yeah. Does this have children? Yes. How about this one? Yes. How about the four? Does it have any children? No. Now, I cannot write a proof of this. Okay, that's beyond my mental capacity at this hour of the morning. But I'm as far as I, I know, when you have a fully parenthesized expression, you parse into a tree, the leaf nodes. Remember, the leaf is one that has neither a uh, has no subtree on it. The numbers are always, are always going to be leaf nodes. So you can use that to tell you whether you want to put it in parentheses or not. And again, how can you tell if something is a leaf node? If the leaf node is if the left child is null and the right child is null, then that must be a leaf. This one's a leaf because there's nothing to the left or right of the number one. Even though it's not, it, I, I, the first time I tried this, I was saying, oh, it's everything at the bottom level. No, that's not the case. These are at the bottom level of the tree, the three, five, four, and six. But the one is not at the bottom level, but it's still a leaf node, and we don't want it to have parentheses around. Because it hides. So that's, that's a, it, it, once it, that's the hint. So I'll, I'll upload what I have here, and if you want to work on it to make it work better. Oh, as long as we're in the, in the neighborhood, though, let's do something that we can add on this. Are you able to see the screen now? Is it showing up for the people on Zoom? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, what we could do here is in here in binary tree, we could do it to string. So I can say here, um, oh, excuse me, let me stop my video. Public string. Now, we'd, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a list of lists. Remember that thing that we had that we can't do in Java easily? So if I would have something like, for example, an A, and then on the left is a B, and on the right hand is a C. So we're going to do is a list of list notation. And this was going to be a candidate for pre-order. We want to do the root first, then the left, then the right. And let's do a, I'm going to have a helper method. Let's call it um, stringify. Well, I'm actually going to need a string result here, ain't I? So now result becomes result plus stringify of this. which is the root. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to work, mind you, okay? I have, I have no idea. I'm, I'm doing this one totally improvised. So this is going to be exciting. Okay, we definitely need a public string called stringify. And we're going to give it a binary tree of type T, T. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put, uh, you know what? Actually, let's do result plus. Um, hmm. Okay, we want to turn return a square bracket plus t dot key plus stringify of t dot left child plus String by t dot right child plus and that's essentially what we want to do, correct? Now the question here is okay, if t um, is not equal to null. I'm doing something wrong here. This, this is very, very weird. I think this belongs. Okay. Wow. Okay. 
I know that there is a way to do this and I, I don't have it planned out well enough. I haven't thought it through. And this is one place where I would say, okay, this is the place where a, a, an inexperienced programmer will just keep plowing right ahead and start throwing things at a wall and see what sticks. I have been through that long enough to know that this is not a good way to do. I have to stop and say, no, I am not even going to try and do this until I actually think it through thoroughly and see what the hell is, is really going on. I know that it has to be a pre-order traversal. I'm absolutely sure of that. But the exact details of it, I'm totally unclear on, and I'm going to just back off of it. So we'll say this is for another time. Um, later on in the day, if I get if I feel really ambitious, I will complete that and upload it. Okay, that's tree traversals. And we're going to be seeing them coming on, coming along a lot. Uh, this next part that I said was we're going to be skipping, which is the priority queues with binary heaps. But you need to know, you would like to, I'd like you to know what a priority queue is. And we know about queues already. Priority queues, um, you remove things from the front, but the logical order is not by when they entered. It's by how important they are. So, for example, let's say you're in the passport processing office, and normally you handle requests as they come in. Their priority is by when you receive them. But every once in a while, you're going to come up with somebody who says, oh, my gosh, I need to have a passport, and I'm paying a lot of extra money because I need my passport within the next two days. And that person moves immediately to the front of the line. Or you can think of it by as, as you're, you're waiting in a line in a nightclub, and it depends on how much you have paid the doorman that tells you how much you're where you're going to be in the line. So your position in line is not merely by when you entered. That's one criterion you could use. But there's also who is of higher priority. Whoever is in higher priority gets in the queue before someone of lesser priority. Um, and. You could use uh, inserting into a list and sorting it, but that's pretty expensive. And there's one thing called a binary heap, and it looks a lot like a tree. Okay, but you can, it turns out you can represent a binary heap with a, a single list rather than having to actually build a tree structure. And that's what section 6, 9, 6, 10, and 6, 11 talk about. And that's all very lovely and exciting. And now that you know what a priority queue is, if you are filled with enthusiasm for figuring out how that works, you can read those sections. But it's important to know that these priority queues exist. And also, well, more mundane than just, um, you know, passport offices and getting into nightclubs is when you're scheduling um, tasks to be running on a computer. Okay, you have to prioritize them and which, like printing jobs, okay? It's not just which printer is available, but you know when is it needed, that sort of thing. So, or scheduling tasks to be run by the operating system, that's a priority queue. So onwards to something that is very important, namely a binary search tree. And this is gonna have key value pairs and we're gonna have uh, a different way of mapping from a key to a value. And we're going to use a binary tree structure to provide for efficient searching, it says. Okay, that's that's all rather abstract. So let's go and take a look at this. Okay. So here's a binary search tree. It's a binary tree. Okay, every... Um, node in the tree has either a left tree or a right tree, subtree, or both. But it has this very special property. The keys that are less than the parent are found in the left subtree, and the keys that are greater are found in the right subtree. So for example, everything that's greater, less than 70 will be on the right half, namely 31, 14, 23. Everything bigger than 70 will be guaranteed to be in the right half of the subtree. And by enforcing this rule, 
we can get a lot of advantages. Remember the binary search where we could eliminate half of everything every time? We are going to have the same thing here. If the thing we're looking for is greater than 70, then guaranteed we don't have to look at anything in the left subtree. If it's um, we're looking for, let's say, 45, then we have to look at the left subtree and we can ignore the right subtree entirely. And then when we descend here to 31, well, we know that 31, if it's we're looking for 45, can't be in 14, 14 and 23, and there is no right child, so that means 45 is not in the tree at all. Again, we're if, if eliminating half of the candidates every time we go and do another, um, descend another level into our tree. Now, the next question is, how do we insert a node let me move this here into a tree. So here's a, here's a binary tree. I think I've set this up right. Let's check. Everything here on the left had better be less than 17. That's correct. Everything here to the right of 5 is definitely greater than 5. Um, 29 here, everything to the right is bigger. There's nothing to the left. That's okay. We don't have to have something to the left all the time. So... Um, Oh, what should we add to this? Let's add um, 15. Okay. So we're going to start at the root of the tree. And we're going to compare the new key to the key in the current node. Okay, 15 is less than the current node. So now we're going to have to start searching this right hand, the left hand subtree. And we're going to do this again recursively. So starting at 5, let's see where 15 is supposed to go. 15 is greater than 5, which means we're going to have to, it's going to go somewhere in this tree, guaranteed. Okay. Is 15 greater than 11? Well, yes, it is. That means we're going to have to go somewhere in this tree. Now we have 16. Is 15 less than 16? Yes, it is. And that means it's going to go to the left. So 15 will insert right there. So if I had 15, let's see if I can do this here. Actually, let's, and let's see, we're going to have to make this a, oh, hold on. The problem is here is, excuse me here. The problem is I'm trying to get the circle and not the text. There we go. So here's where our 15 is going to go. And I know these lines are not exactly perfectly lined up, but ask me if I care. Um, so this is where we want, and we wanted the 15 to go in there. And here are the nodes that we had to visit. We had to visit this one first. And I'll use a light yellow for that. And then we had to visit the five. And then the 11. And then the 16. Oh, I hate when these colors are so hard to distinguish. There we go. So that's what I had to go through to insert the 15. Um, Let's say I wanted to insert 30. I'd visit 17. 17 is greater than 30. Therefore, I'd know it's going to be somewhere in this tree. Okay, 35. 30 is less than 35, so it's going to be somewhere in here. 30 is greater than 29, so it's going to have to be here. 31, 30 is less than 31, and therefore it's going to, if I had had 32, it would have gone to the right of 31. So that's the insertion process. And again, this is going to be a nice candidate for recursion.
And let's take a look at the definition of a tree in the meantime. So let's close off some of these things that I don't need anymore. And let's look at what a binary search tree, let's look at the implementation of this. And boy, is there a lot to this, okay? We're going to have keys and values this time. So the keys are gonna be the names of our nodes and the value is gonna be the associated information. So for example, the key could be the name of the state and the capital of the state would be the value. We want the keys to be comparable. We're definitely gonna need that because we're gonna to have to compare keys. The values, I put that in there just for the sake of completeness, although there is nothing that demands that you have comparable values. You never really need to compare the values for anything, but it couldn't hurt to put it in. And we also want to be able to have it be iterable, which means we want to be able to move through it with an enhanced for loop. So I can say for each of the items in my binary tree, and that'll give us, I think, I think I implemented this as a pre-order traversal. Now, the root is going to be a tree node with the given key and value types. And we also want to keep track of how many items there are in the tree, just for the hell of it. So if I have a binary search tree, the root is null and size is zero. So that's when I initialize something. And technically to be really Um, the programming style note here, it bothers me a little bit to have a variable, a property, and a method with the same name. I don't like doing that, but Java lets you do it. I think there, I know there are languages where you can't get away with that. It will complain bitterly, or it will give you some really weird result that you don't want. Um, now let's look at this tree node. What does a tree node look like? What does one of these elements inside of a binary search tree look like? And we're going to go down here. Oh, crap. Excuse me a second here. I'm going to stop um, recording for a second. <laughs>